I want us to read John 14, 13. John 14, 13. Thank you for your name. I want us to read this scripture together loud and clear. One, two, go. John 16, 23. What is the meaning of whatsoever? John 16, 23. Let's read it again together. One, two, go. Jesus, in the two places, he said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Then there he says, in that day you will ask me nothing. Well, to give a short explanation of what Jesus said there, he simply was explaining something. The first part is when you use the name of Jesus. The second part is when you pray to God in the name of Jesus. Did you get that? The first one is when you face a mountain and you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, go. The second one is when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus. The two aspects of prayer, Jesus demonstrated it there. There are prayers that we direct to God. And there are prayers that we direct to the forces of darkness or any mountain or obstacle standing before us. There's a place for the two. First service stopped on this north. Now, in now chapter 10 or chapter 9, verse 40, I was going to read this before. We just need to pray a little, so we might have to stand a little. Because we are going to use the name of Jesus. This was when Dorcas died. Peter did it too here. When they called Peter that Dorcas had, had, had died and he came, the Bible said Peter knelt down and prayed. So he first of all faced God. Lord, this woman is dead. Any reason for it, he began to pray. Then the Bible says, it's as if he was praying away from the body. Because the Bible says, when he finished praying, turning to the body, so he was not facing the body before. So when he entered the room, Dorcas was pulled down. Peter just found a place to kneel down. He seemed to have an assurance in his spirit right now that, okay, deal with the spirit of death now. So he got up from his nails. Having prayed to God, now it's time to talk to the dead body. Is somebody getting me? Then Peter said to the body, Tabitha, arise. Because of James 4, 7. If this is all I get to share today, no problem. Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. It's not every time we do a long teaching. Ziko Barisha. James 4. Submit yourself therefore to God. Then, resist the devil. That means before you resist the devil, you'll be sure that you are submitted to God. Why? Demons are meant to obey you. But under certain circumstances, when you leave a door open, or they say, if you are the reason why they stay, they might not obey. So in submitting yourself to God, God will show you where Stan is taking advantage of you. Hallelujah. Because at times, what they call tips of the eye back, as back voice, you just see the tips. They realize it's under. When, according to Papa Egin, when he said what the Lord shared with him, Jesus explained what happened between him and the madman of Gadra. The man that was filled with demons. When Jesus said, come out, they didn't come out immediately. Then Jesus knew by the Spirit that they were men. He said, so how many are you? And then the man spoke. So Jesus told Egin that if we're there that day, the disciples only heard one man talking. 
It was by the gift of the signing of spirit that Jesus knew that there were legions inside. Of course, he still there just one word to say, I go. But first of all, the revelation of what was happening was revealed to Jesus. I believe in the way the Bible is written um, in Matthew 17 and I think Luke 9. The story I've referred to many times of the epileptic boy that Jesus healed. I believe the Bible says in one of the versions that at the beginning the boy was having deaf and dumb spirits. But I believe that the Bible said that because they got to know at the end, they didn't know initially that it was deaf and dumb spirits, I believe. Because the disciples tried to cast out the spirit and the spirit wouldn't go. What was happening to the boy was epileptic seizure. When Jesus told the boy to come, he started conversing. But Jesus did not even talk about epilepsy at all. He said, you deaf and dumb spirits. But if you look at the boy's mani the manifestation, it looked like someone that had epilepsy. He had epilepsy. But Jesus knew that epilepsy was not the problem. There was a spirit called deaf and dumb spirits masquerading as epilepsy. So Jesus went straight to the root of the matter. He did not address epilepsy at all. He just said, you deaf and dumb spirit, come out. When it comes to demons, we don't pray to God, we command them. We are led this morning that there are people, are there people with oppressions? Oppressions, oppressions of the enemy. Depressions, attacks here and there. It's not vigils that you need. It's not prophet that you need. It's authority in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. There are dimension of the name of Jesus. Every name must bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things on the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. The Father is glorified anytime you exercise authority through the name of Jesus. And finally, Luke 10, 19. He said, Behold, I give you authority over snakes and serpents, serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means. It is called prayer of authority. Prayer of authority will mean that you take your stand. You look at the spirit of whatever is troubling you, and you issue a command in the name of Jesus Christ. It rests on confidence in what Jesus did when he died and rose again. Did you get that now? Bali Katuza. When there is a word like this and you are steered, we speak when we are steered. We speak when the spirit is moving. That's when the auction is available. There is auction available now. It's called corporate anointing for people to speak right now. Why am I perceiving that somebody can announce a wedding date right now? Whether it's sickness or disease, Poverty in family. Spirit, there is a spirit of infirmity. Yes. There is sickness. People can be sick or malaria. There is sickness that is not demonic. But everything comes because of the fall of man. But there are sicknesses that are demonic. They will defy any drug. Oppression of Satan. Can you take authority in the name of Jesus Christ? Speak over your family. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Speak with authority. Now we are not praying, we are ordering. Salabakato Laba Shataya. Zete Kebala Shatoria Bastele. End the activity of Satan in my family. Satan, take your hands. Mention the situation and command it to stop. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Use your authority.
the Lord of sorrow. All things were meant by Him and through Him. Oh, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Sakalabayash. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Masata laba ya shatos. Malaba sete ke ba shato kobos. Hallelujah. I want to speak as I'm led. Anyone here standing or anybody streaming live right now watching me who is under any form of oppression, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all them oppressed of the devil. In his name I come this morning. You oppression, your time expires now. You foul spirit of infirmity, spirit of poverty, depression, spiritual attacks, all arrows coming from the enemy's camp. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Take your leave and out. Sahalabaya. Mande kasaliboku shalibos. The power of spell is broken right now. Manipulation ends right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Just one more prayer. Any silent oppression of the devil around me. I end the first side by saying that it's called a serpent for a reason. It's into sneaking. Serpent can be in your house for one month without you knowing. Satan knows that you have authority. Sometimes he sneaks in. You don't even know what it's up to until it is too late. But thank God for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. If there is anything around me that Satan is building, subtly, indirectly or directly, by the power of the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, his activities are shut down right now. Say the same thing with authority. Go ahead. Say it loud and clear. Use the name of Jesus. Anything around you, anything in you, anything in the family. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. I see victory in the here. <laughs> Do you believe something that just happened now? <laughs> Glory to God in the eyes. We bless your name, Lord. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is someone blessed already? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mark 16, 17. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. Can I have your seat? God bless you. Sorry for keeping you up for that long. But I'm sure you enjoyed it. In my name. So prayer of authority is prayed in the name of Jesus and is based on the revelation of what Jesus has done. So I spoke earlier about two types of prayer. Mark 11, 23 and 24. So there is what is called prayer of faith, which is not supposed to be repeated. When you pray a prayer of faith, you come out with confidence. It's Mark eleven twenty four. 24. That's prayer of faith. The Bible says, give me verse 24. Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire. That means it covers anything. When you pray. Now this is what makes it difficult for a carnal mind. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. And, and, and. That is when you shall have them. You will not have them until you believe you have them. Because Bible says without faith, Hebrews 11 says, it's impossible to place God. When you are praying a prayer of faith, interestingly, this is the prayer of faith that James talked about. He says, is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elder. James 5, let them pray for him. Anointing him with oil. He said the prayer of faith will save the weak man. And if he has committed a sin, he will be automatically forgiven. When they pray over him, the prayer of faith. He said the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It's a prayer we pray once. Many times we will not see the answer immediately. But there is a step after praying. Once you finish praying, the Bible demands that you believe. I have prayed a prayer of faith. Lord, I want to pay rent. The rent is two million. The rent is seven million. The rent is 14 million. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you said your word, you will supply all my needs. Lord, I pray for the supply of this rent. When you are true, if it's a prayer of faith, then what happens next when they tell me whether it's a prayer of faith or not? If it's a prayer of faith, now that you are true praying, you are going to start thanking God for the rent. Even though you have not seen it, as you thank God, then you see. Is that straightforward enough? Everything will fight you. When you pray for your faith over your body, your sick body, I've done that many times, you don't see reaction immediately. It looks like you are still as sick as you were before praying. But if you begin to give thanks to God, believing that you are healed, then you will be healed. Did you get what I'm saying? Because this is God's understanding. The moment you are prayed, there is a release. Conversion happens by faith. So, this is very important. But I stop on something. I, I, okay, let, let, let me just, let, let's, I want to read one guy. Jonah, one of our brothers in the Bible, Jonah. <laughs> a very fantastic brother. Some people, when we get to heaven, we'll not be able to look at their faces. We have used them to preach. Even when you are sitting, they call you Jonah. He only slept once. I don't know why, but <laughs> Jonah, 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 Jonah. Jonah, we will hook my boots neck in there like Shemil <laughs> That will be your great great grandpa. Did you call me? <laughs> so, Jonah. Now, of course, we know that God prepared a fish to swallow this guy. But this guy is an amazing guy. And this is what I want to stop today. How did he pray like this? The Bible says, then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. But look at how he constructed his word. No, verse 2. He said, I cried by the reason of my affliction unto Lord, and he heard me. He was sitting in the belly of the fish. How did he know that God heard him? <laughs> now, probably Jonah had prayed before, and God gave him a word. So maybe this second prayer came out of, but whichever way you look at it, he was sitting in the belly of the fish when he was saying this thing. So I believe it must have been that Jonah prayed a prayer of faith. After praying, he just sat back in the belly of the fish and started thanking God. He said, I cried. He used past tense. I cried by the reason of my affliction. And the Lord heard me. Out of the belly of hell, I cried. And thou heardest my voice. Past tense. You heard me. Next verse. 
For you have cast me to the deep. The flood passed by me. Next verse. I said, I'm cast down forever from your side. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Next verse. The water compassed me, the weeds around my head. Verse 6. I went down to the bottoms of the mountain. The earth and its bar, they closed around me. Yet, as thou brought my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Next verse. Then my soul fainted within me. I remembered the Lord, and my prayers came into his ear, into thy only temple. Next verse. Those who observe lying vanity forsake their own mercy. Next verse. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I vowed. That's why I believe that probably one hour before then, he had prayed before. And as he was praying, he got to a place where he received peace that God has sent him. He actually made a vow. One day we'll talk along that line. There is see, when we fight, when we pray, we do it on many forms. In many ways. There is a prayer of vow. Some people will say, Lord, if you heal me, I will give you a testimony. There are things that I now vow that if you give me a son. Sometimes it's like you cross to another level where you add vow to your prayer. Yeah. The brother I told you of about, I don't know how many times they rejected him at the embassy. But it was such a powerful keyboard. He just wanted to travel out to and enjoy himself. But his friend had gone ahead doing masters. And that one started in church. We were just about five people in the church. And they used to call the chorus, but they were in school together. It was now in Nigeria, the friend abroad. And he just said, Lord, I know you called my friend. If I find my way in the UK, I'm not joining any big church. I will stay and play keyboard for this guy. They brought the visa. They brought everything to him in the house. It's as if at times God waits for people to say some things. Because at times in the blessing, you must be guided. If God expects you to be the one that helps the poor and that spreads the kingdom, and you are praying for wealth, it might not really happen until you actually begin to add some dimensions to your prayer. That Lord, as you do this, it is 50 50. Lord say, hey, now they talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. It happens like that at times. Because if God doesn't do that, <laughs> human being, we are so frail. So at times, it needs you to get to a point where you will have to promise Him. Certain things. Yes. Lord, if I marry, you will still be my number one. I will do this and that. Yes. Because you can marry and your husband can become the next, the one you worship now. It's true. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is somebody with me? So there can be a place for a vow, but it's a personal thing. It's like you don't just say, Lord, we are start cooking up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, God knows, he knows where you are just talking from your mouth. Real vows, they come from your heart. In fact, it's like an inspiration you get in prayer. You just know that you are supposed to say this. I don't, so I don't think Anna premeditated what she said. Anyway, <laughs> I will sacrifice, I will pay my vow. He said all these things. Now, next verse. And the Lord spake to Jonah, to the fish, and he vomited Jonah upon him. Even when God heard the prayer, he moved God. You know, faith moves God. How can a man be praying like this? So Jonah must have been like, Lord, if you deliver me, I will give you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. If you do this, and when the Philip prayed, he opened his mouth, he opened his eyes, and started rejoicing. And then he began this second prayer. He said, I cried to the Lord and he heard me. He was so sure, even in the belly of the fish, that he was heard. And he said, they that observe lying vanity. He said, for me, I will pay my vow. I will do this. God said, fish, vomit that guy. Who is talking like this? Prayer of faith is based upon the fact that Jesus said that whatever you ask the Father, he will give you. So when you are asking the Father for anything, you have absolute confidence that if Jesus did not lie, God has said you. So that makes you to leave the place of prayer in joy, even though you have not seen the results. So a woman prays that, Lord, before the end of this year, I'm getting married. She begins to rejoice and start preparing for wedding. Aya, Baku, Zalitas. I follow the beat of, uh, some of the testimony in the redemption camp, they are, they are just, uh, they are, 
just concluded uh, um, convention. One woman that I don't know after 16 years of binders or so, she went to buy baby stuff. There is something because a word was given in church. I just I just received and went to. When you act in faith, God backs you up. Hallelujah. It's God does not dwell in the visible realm. Ah, when when Thomas said that I said I see him and put my hand, Jesus finally appeared and Thomas did, and he said, "My Lord, my God." He was mesmerized. Then Jesus told Thomas that no. He said, you see me. He said, you will believe because you see me. He said, blessed are those who have not seen, yet they are believed. Why? The power of God rests in the invisible. So, at times, part of your prayer is a prayer like Jonah. Remember where we were coming from last week. But now, this is a prayer of faith. But there's one more thing I was going to say before. You see, there is a prayer of faith. But the one we did before we sat down was prayer of authority. When it comes to demonic spirits, when it comes to obstacles, once it's not man, once it's a force of that, a, a spiritual force, we have authority. Except you are living in disobedience. Because of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 10, verse 4, the weapons are warfare, blah, blah, blah. He said, ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. If you operate beyond your jurisdiction, you might not be able to command on forces. I have heard of missionaries who went to villages that they were not sent to and they died there. If you go where you are not sent, there will be a problem. So, but for an average Christian, not on a mission in that sense, as in going to a city, there are things that you can live in your life. They can become open door to satanic invasion. That if you are in a service like what happened this morning now, by what we have said, God went to open your eyes when we pray, you will see spirit fleeing. But Jesus gave you a guarantee that when the unclean spirit leaves a man, he begins to look for an opportunity to come back. This is why Hebrews 12, 15 says, looking diligently, lest anybody fail of the grace of God, lest there be a root of bitterness springing up and therefore many be defiled. That word there is looking diligently, it means the word watch and pray. I want to end this message by saying to church, I have said this to Christians around many times. Listen very well to me. Things are not as innocent. Things are not as neutral as you think they are. I say to this church and to everybody out there hearing me, Christians, be careful of songs and slangs and things you get involved with. Apostle, Paul, Apostle John wrote in his epistle, he said, little children, keep yourself away from idols. And he said, I don't, Paul said, I don't want you to have fellowship with demons. Paul warned, he warned Christians in his letter. So Christians can fellowship with demons. It does not matter. This one does not matter. That one does not matter. Everything does not matter. You have demons having filled there in your house. And you begin to have all kinds of issues and problems. When I was in 300 level, the guy asked me a question. I, I was wondering why he asked me. Because some people, you know, some people are very stubborn. Naturally stubborn. Or supernaturally stubborn. You know? <laughs> it, 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 I just said, I want to ask you a question. Now they say you're a pastor. I said, yes. That I'm actually a president of fellowship, not a pastor. He said, where? Well, that um, all these uh, uh, pastors say, don't listen to blues. That, uh, he said, I sleep with blues. I plug it. So I just enjoy it. That is here a sin. I saw this question whether something is a sin or not. That's the base level. It's not about, it's not only about sin or no sin. It's also about your spiritual level. Is this necessary? A time comes, you don't even ask whether this dressing is a sin. You just ask that at my level. I mean, with the grace of God upon me, should I dress like this? So, even the Holy Spirit told me, like Jesus when he was on that. I thought you don't tell people yes or no. And when he asked me, he told me that I said, a lot of pastors have told me, and I, I told them that that's not possible. So I, was, I, I wanted to say that. So why are you asking me? You have asked a lot of pastors, and they told you to stop listening. You have made up, you have made up your mind. But you know, I just stepped back a little before I could say that. So why are you asking me? And I believe that maybe the gift of the Spirit kicks in. I just heard in my spirit that ask him the kind of dreams he's been having, the way they've been flogging this guy in his dream. First hand beating and creatures appearing to him. And I thought, I said, you'll see all kinds of funny creatures when you sleep. You know, immediately, just like, and it was my senior. 
He was in vet medicine. I said, you'll see all kinds of things in your dream. I said, so do I need to answer again? You know what? Right before me, he went to the room. He took the, it was workman then. This, this guy, he took it, and he asked him to that, and he smashed it. Because when you ask Jesus a question, he doesn't answer, he goes straight to the root of the question. The Lord is more like, why are you asking the question you're asking? I said, is it wrong to drink? The more thing is that, why are you asking? So why are you asking? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Of course, there's no scripture that says in the time that I drink it. Scripture emphasizing drunkenness. But why are you asking? Is it wrong to kiss a relationship? Why are you asking? Are you planning to kiss somebody? Want to kiss somebody tonight? So why are you asking? <laughs> you see, if you're asking borderline question, it means that you're living around the border. <laughs> <laughs> go, go to the center. Yes. And you know, the way your emotion is. Have you noticed when they, they are doing Olympics or they have almost ended or they've ended, they are ending today or so. When you see people running, I close 100 meters. Do you notice that? Have you noticed that 100 meters, nobody stops on the finishing line. They will run across the line because of the speed which they are coming with. What they call that speed? Physics people, if you have not forgotten your physics, there's something they call it. <laughs> How many of you had A1 in physics? <laughs> Let's ask our question again. <laughs> How many of you had A, A in physics at all? Can I see your hand? A decision in physics. Ah? Okay. <laughs> what do they call that? What do they, what, what, how do they explain that? Eh? Momentum. Thank you, sir. So you notice that even the one that carry last, it will cross the line. Because they've been running. Now this is the finishing line. They know that's the line. They will slow down, but they will still cross the line, everybody. You see, emotion is like that. If you are too close to someone that is not your wife, too close to people that should not be too close to, when the emotion rises, it will go beyond the border. Did you get what I just said now? It's true. Woman emotion is very powerful. Once it rises, ask those that it has happened to him, they will tell you the truth. <laughs> I spoke to a guy one day. So the lady came to visit him. She sat here, he sat here, they are watching TV. A force carried him. <laughs> and the next time they are sitting down together. And the next minute, the voice will grow low. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, you don't know. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> May you not know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is somebody with me? Are you with me? That's why you should guide yourself. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Pay attention to your life. Looking diligently means that watch and pray. Looking diligently, be very diligent. Looking diligently. Every time you meet a new person who wants to come to life. Looking diligently. Looking there. I describe for you that there is a reason why it's called the ancient serpents. It's in its nature to crawl in. You are surrounded. This one will lead me into thought service. You are surrounded. If you know the way the enemy sees you, as they were coming out of Egypt, Balak quickly ran, ran to Balaam. Balak was the king. Balaam was the prophet. They both sounded like Balak, Balaam. Bad, bad boys, two bad boys, Balaam, Balak. So Balak was the king, king of Moab. The word they use, I will start next service, like, give me that uh, Numbers 22, verse 6. Look at what this guy said here. They did not even know, they saw that they know. Till Balak was trying to cause them on the mountain, they were enjoying themselves down said, there are many battles God is fighting for you that you are not even aware of. I'm too, I'm too grateful that the enemy is wasting his arrows. They are not even getting to you. Because there is the Almighty who watches over you. And he never sleeps, he never slumbers. Hallelujah. Come therefore, start from verse, verse 5. Look at this guy talking here. This is Balak. He sent messenger to him by the river. He said, behold, there is come a people from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. They abide over against me. Verse 6. Verse 6. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, cause these people for me. 
They are too mighty for me. Paradventure. If you curse them, I might prevail. Balaam, Balak was saying to Balaam that there's no way, there's no way I can do it. The hand of God is on these people. They will conquer me. For me to stand a chance at all, something must happen to them. Ah, lucky last Sunday when I thought of me, Shaka, I explained this. They ask you, the life of a Christian and of ordinary people. Samson used that word three times. Judges chapter 16, verse 7, verse 11, verse 17. Those three verses. Judge Samson kept saying that when he was teasing the girl, if you tie me, I will be weak and be like any other man. He said it in verse 7. He moved to verse, he said, I shall be weak and be as another man. Verse 11, he repeated the same thing again. I shall be weak and be as another man. Verse 17, repeated the same thing again. I shall be weak and be as another man. In other words, Samson understood that, come, I am not an ordinary man. But something must happen to me for me to fall to the category of ordinary men. So Balaam said, Balaam said the same thing, that if you curse them, their spiritual energy can be reduced, then I can fight them then. Satan is very strategic. How many of you are fighting with low spiritual energy? You don't know. You are going to do things, to say things, to attend places where your spirit condemned. And on coming out, you have lost spiritual energy. And neither created nor destroyed. Now the enemy is laughing because now he's fighting you with a low spiritual energy. He knows that the real you and the fool you, he does not stand a chance. But he keeps sending temptation ahead of himself to weaken you before it comes to do his damage. Temptation upon temptation. Anytime you yield to temptation, you have lost something valuable. You need to ask God for mercy. And you must stop rising and falling and rising and falling over the same thing every now and then. Every now and then. Men who womanize, some of them don't know what they would have become if they, could, if they were not doing it. But the enemy keeps giving them a, 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 an idea. What is pleasure in jumping from girl to girl? What, what? It excites your flesh, but at the end of the day, you lose something. Let me stop here. Let's rise. What a service. I am so certain that God has visited you in a very special way. And you have testimonies to share. You can do that by sending an email to testimonies at householdofdavid.org. And if you joined the service and you've not given your life to Christ or you're not sure of your relationship with Jesus Christ, I would like to lead you in a very simple prayer. I'd like you to say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to take preeminent control of everything that has to do with me. Become my Lord and become my Savior. Hence, I declare from this moment forward, I am no longer a sinner but I am a child of God. The Jesus Christ is Lord of my life in Jesus' precious name. Now, if you said that prayer after me, would like you to send an email to the email that is being displayed on the screen and the number, or you can send a text message to the number that you see on the screen. If you'd like to follow us in the household of David, you can visit any of our social media platforms or our website and know a lot more about us. We would also want to know about you and would like to hear from you. Um, till next time, I would like to say keep living in an atmosphere of God's mercies and God bless you. Get ready for a very phenomenal and a remarkable week. God bless you.